So Warcraft Rumble has had a pretty rough weekend, so we're going to dive into exactly what's happened, what that means, and then towards the end of this video, or at the end of this video, I'll announce the winners of the giveaway that I started about two weeks ago, uh, but I've been a little bit under the weather, still a bit croaky, so apologies it's taken this long, but let's jump straight into it. On Friday of last week, so only about three days ago, Microsoft announced a number of redundancies um, of which the Warcraft Rumble team was affected. Now, I don't know how many people were on the Warcraft Rumble team before the redundancies were announced. Um, and then I don't know how many have been affected and therefore how many are remaining. I think Old Guardian is looking into that to see if he can get some figures to see how big of a team remains. We're not necessarily expecting Blizzard uh, to announce exactly what that is but the team has been hit by a number of layoffs um, which is obviously just awful news in typical blizzard fashion this was announced on a friday what that meant was uh, the number of discord uh, communities that i'm in was rife with uh, speculation um, and there's been a growing um frustration and annoyance with a number of things in the game a number of enduring bugs which we're going to talk about shortly um and that all kind of started to spill over a little bit of the weekend because there's been lots of tension which has been brewing and then this was a pretty big announcement of the layoffs on the team when people are already concerned about the cadence of the updates the quality of the updates the bugs etc etc and like i say i don't have answers um to to what the future holds we're waiting out for that announcement and um, hopefully something will come soon but over the weekend there was a bit of a vacuum created where there was a significant event um, and then um, we were kind of in the dark about what that actually meant now the Warcraft Rumble team are having a bad time I am not here to kick the Warcraft Rumble team whilst they are down however this is feeling like a pretty low point so there's potential we can use this low point uh, to address some of the issues which we've been dealing with over the history of Rumble since it went global, so roughly a year ago, just coming up to its one year anniversary, um, to try and make the game better in the future. Because fundamentally, uh, there's a pretty good game in there somewhere. It's it's not reached its potential. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to be able to argue against that. But fundamentally, there is a lot of us who have committed to this game um, through time, effort, financially. I'm going to show you um, at some point later uh, the uh, expense um, as in real money that I have put into the game. So I've got some um, some screenshots of my Battle.net account, which we can look through um, and we can see exactly um, how deep into this I am. Not one of the biggest, biggest spenders in the game, um, but I've certainly committed enough money in this for me to feel um, like pretty frustrated with how things are going and echoing uh, some of the people who've been more vocal and, and really, really are disappointed with this. Anyway... On Discord, what I will say is over this weekend, it would seem like we have had more engagement by the dev team than any other time before. Now, that may well have been the dev team trying to put out certain fires uh, and certain rumors and speculation and stuff like that. But there has been a lot more communication from the dev team. And I was in the military for quite a while. We had a phrase, no comms, no bombs. And that was all about the importance of communication to essentially reach your end state, get the job done. And I think a lot of the frustration that people have had is when something has gone wrong um, or when something has been announced. Um, but then there's like no follow up communication after that. So it has been useful that some of the devs have come on over the weekend uh, to chat through some people. Now, we might not like what they've said, right? And that is just the way that it goes, right? But I think there is some value in the fact that some people have, have come out um, and, 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 and tried to answer the questions, like say, whether the answer is what you wanted to hear or not. You know, it's appeased some people. It probably will have uh, further inflamed uh, the situation for others. Now, what I want to talk about is bugs that are in the game at the moment. And these bugs are, are significant and have been in the game for a long time. And 
whilst there are people that want additional features into the game and additional minis and all the rest of it, for me, there are fundamental, basic, foundational things that need to be addressed, that need to be implemented, that needs to be fixed before we even start considering about adding more content and, and, and all these other things. And we're going to start out with something that has affected a lot of people, and that is the missing guest accounts. Now, I'm not going to go into all the detail of the who, what, why, but essentially there was a bug in the game. I can't even remember which one it was now. And the uh, one of the suggested solutions was to uninstall the game and then reinstall the game. What happened was people who were on guest accounts, who hadn't linked to Battle.net accounts, have now basically lost their account and there this has been going on for quite a while now there doesn't really seem to be a way of regaining access to their account and tied to this is a number of payment issues which are in the game that's people who have bought things and then not received the goods that they've got and then there's been subsequent issues with refunds be that through warcraft rumble be that through their app store google play or, or uh, ios um but then there's been people who've been able to make payments to the game whilst on a guest account and now that guest account is gone and those payments are seemingly have been you know just just vanished or whatever um so fundamentally um this is uh highlighted an issue where your payments aren't tied really to anything and you can just lose all of it in one go and for me if there are issues around account ownership and actual money being lost that is massive and i can only imagine the rage that certain people are feeling by not only the fact that this has happened but how helpless and how um you know there's just a complete lack of answers a complete lack of support and a complete lack of hope or promise and um, that there's anything that can be done to get these accounts back so that is still underway and that has been bubbling away for a while and even though i wasn't affected it is definitely a frustration to see so many stories um, of people that are affected by this. As far as the game goes, then there's been another Anixia bug in there, which won't affect many people, but there was an original Anixia bug where you could put so many well pegs down that she stopped spawning her ads, and then you could just roll over, and there's another one now where the Earth Elemental, I think it is, will taunt, and then Anixia won't phase. And it just makes a mockery of, of that the whole um of, of that whole part of the uh, of the campaign with Anixia supposed to be in the pinnacle of it. Uh, and now uh, she's broken again. But on a PvP side of the house, I haven't played PvP at all since this book came in. And it has lasted for the entire season. And it is the Spell and Unbound bug. Now, to the best of my knowledge, I think you can unbound onto your opponent's core, which you couldn't do before because you had that kind of deployment protected zone around it. And now you cannot spell onto your opponent's core unless you use something like deep breath just because of the length of deep breath but you used to be able to execute or blizzard or arcane blast or whatever onto your opponent's core and that is not working that came in with one of the updates that was a bug or that is a bug that's not what was intended to happen that's been in the game now for three weeks four weeks now there is rumors that the uh, that the fix is on its way however as of today and as of the past three to four weeks, it hasn't been fixed at all. There's not been great communication about it. And having a bug in the game that's as significant as that is for this amount of time has just bred enormous frustration. Um, at, at how can, the, but essentially, how can this bug be in the game for this long, right? That That is the question. And that is where the frustration comes in that surely you can do something about this get this fixed get the game working the way it's meant to be working but this is going to lead me on to the testing process because whilst there has been some very good features uh, which i uh, you know or some exciting stuff which has been announced over the past uh, almost a year what we found time and time again is that the actual execution of the update has left a lot to the imagination it's hard to think of an update that went smoothly, where, where things actually came out the way they were. The one that springs to mind is possibly Molten Core, although I don't think everything from a phase transition perspective was maybe working, or that might have been Sieges. But anyway, there's not really been an update which has gone smoothly, which has led to quite a lot of questions about the testing process leading up to uh, patches being rolled out. 
One of the questions is that certain patches are enforced and certain patches are not enforced. Now, naturally, when I see something in the App Store, I want to go and download it. I want the latest version, I want the latest content and all the rest of it. But quite often, that has meant that it's broken the game. Then you end up with a player base on two separate versions of the game, which then messes up people like, you know, things like PvP matching or Siege or, you know, Molten Core matching or whatever. Um, and that just puts you in a bit of a weird spot anyway. Then you've got some people with a broken game because they updated some people whose game is you know ticking over with the usual bugs on it 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 just seems like that a lot of the patches are rolled out and tested on the production environment now i'm no coder i'm no games engineer or, or, or anything like that uh, but i'm familiar with the concept of having your development environment and your your live production environment and i don't know uh, the way that rumble works and tests these sort of things but it does seem that nine, nine and a half times out of 10, that a patch is rolled out and it causes some sort of issue. What I do know and what I do for a job is I work in cybersecurity. And when we're talking about updating systems, etc., is that we always ensure that we have a rollback plan in the case that something goes pear-shaped. And we are dealing with a, a business who depends on a particular system working that we can't then have that system being down for X amount of time. So something will be uh, implemented. It doesn't work the way we expected. We will roll back the plan and then work out why. And these rollback plans don't seem to happen in the game. Now, somebody who knows more than me might tell me that that physically can't happen because of X, Y, Z reason. And that's fine. Um, but still, I... I I'm yet to hear why a rollback plan wouldn't be able to be implemented uh, to un uncock up whatever just got cocked up. And that leads on to the fact that Blizzard, as I said at the start, when they released their um, or they announced their redundancies on a Friday, have had a habit of releasing pretty big updates on Fridays. And these updates have generally come with pretty large bugs and the team is then off for the weekend, meaning that generally we are sat around with a bug for two or three days until Monday comes around and, and then, you know, this, this bug can get addressed. Please, please stop updating the game on Fridays, right? That's like IT 101. That's like the basics of IT. Don't update your game or don't update your production server or system on a Friday. You're only going to shoot yourself in the foot. What's, you know, never mind what's the best that can happen. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is it go pear shaped. And then we're all knackered for the weekend and it just sucks. It just makes the game feel rubbish. And that's, this is just this, these are just examples of, of this brewing discontent that there's, uh, that there's been. So there's certainly a number of things that need to be addressed, but we may, uh, to try and take some kind of positive, we may be in a position now where we can focus on. Uh, you know, on putting some of these, some of these things right. Look, call me, call me a blind optimist or whatever it is, but, um, but you know, these are the things that I'd like, um, you know, that, that really need to be solved sooner rather than later. What all of this has meant over the period of time, over the past months and months and months, is that trust within the game, within the team, from the community is is honestly at an all-time low and that has been reflected in the, uh, the the commentary in the communication and the conversation that has happened in the discord over the past over the weekend is that it's kind of got to a breaking point people don't trust what is going on because it has been um setting up an expectation of a particular update and then the usual uh you know you know, being let down or or whatever, whatever, however you want to frame it, is essentially is that the update has never lived up to the expectation, um, or that we've hoped for. There's always been some bugs. It's always broken something, and because this has happened so frequently, that the trust is at an all-time low. And the problem with that is that to rebuild trust is very, very difficult. You can lose someone's trust in an instant, but to get it back again does take you a very, very long time. So. Unfortunately for the Warcraft Rumble team, and whilst there are people who are you know faithful to the game, and you know, and I'm one of those people, unfortunately, there is not much goodwill in the community, so the team really are gonna have to pull out some of the stops uh, to get people back on side. Now, I said at the start of this that I was one of those people that, well, one of a number of people, if not most people, who are feeling extremely uh, frustrated about the game, and not just because 
the game is not doing necessarily what we thought it was going to do. But because we are financially invested into the game and don't feel like we're getting out what we've put in. And like I say, I am not one of the big spenders, but for transparency so that people can see what I've spent and where we're kind of coming from here on the screen. Now, this is my uh, battle net. So as you can see in the top right, OGH, obviously that is me. So you'll see back here, this goes back uh, to my first purchase, which was right at the start of November. So the game had only just gone global. Um, unfortunately, um, which is annoying because I did want to see exactly how much I'd spent, but around the totals here that they, that for some reason it's blanked out um, and I haven't really got the time to go back and, and find out exactly how much each pack cost. So we're just going to have to look at how many things I've bought rather than the exact pounds and pence. Anyway, there's going to be a few World of Warcraft ones in there um, because for some reason they show the figure. Anyway, back in November, bought a few things here and then a few more things. Um, Arc Light Booster coming in there. Got some dungeon stuff when they come in. Um, what, what else we got here? Must have been when I completed Darkshore. Uh, Lord Aeron, is that how you say that? Anyway, uh, another dungeon wall. So plenty of things going on through November and into December. Um, a couple around December here. A couple of festive, wintry type packs. A beat Ungoro there. Treating myself just before New Year's Eve. Um, bit of a horde stuff. Season 3 rare mini. Can't remember who that was. Thorosan. Sylvanas, can't remember, someone like that. Hero of Winter Spring. Uh, then what else we got? Uh, more dungeon stuff. Must have been struggling on a dungeon on that particular week. More into um, into February. Well, look, loads of stuff I've bought in February. Going mad for it. Steel Grill Stockpile. Was that quite an expensive one? Can't remember. Anyway. Um, well, I was keen for it around February, clearly the lead up to Valentine's Day wasn't affecting me, um, so loads of stuff, Platinum Pack, another Steel Grills stockpile there, um, Ungoro Treasures, Season 4 Mini, uh, Hero Black Rock Mountain, so I've, look, I'm financially in this, no, I've not bought thousands and thousands of pounds, but look, there's been a, you know, a reason, reasonable commitment, um, got all sorts of stuff going into April, into May, loads of stuff here, what we got more May, oh, we've got all sorts going on in May, Mythic, Power, nice, um, May, 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 June, it was my birthday on June the 2nd, so I must have treated myself just after that, um, Essence of the Fire Lord, great, okay, so we've got loads in June, oh my goodness me, loads more in June, god, I went mad for it in June, what happened in June? I get a bonus at work or something. Anyway, uh, and then into July, and then a few in July, and then in August, there was one, two, three, and then so far in September, and the date today is the 16th. So, so far into a half, over halfway through September, and so far, I have bought one thing. And with the, only, the fact that I only bought three things in um, August, but then going back to June, where I bought about 25 or 30 things, is that... Even for me, I'm committing money to a game and don't feel like I'm getting enough back from it. You know, the game spends as much time or more time, you know, feeling broken uh, than it does feel like it's working. And I just, at the minute, I just can't keep committing money to this. So I, I am where I am and I'm, you know, we're just waiting. We're just waiting to see what is what. So talking about what is what, I am hoping slash expecting a bit of a formal announcement of some description from the Rumble team early this week. Now, granted, at the moment in the UK, it is like mid-afternoon. So in America, it is like early morning. It is Monday morning. The layoffs were only announced like on Friday. Um, so I'd imagine there's a whole lot of work going on with the team uh, sorting out, you know, themselves. At the end of the day, these are people with jobs. And, and whether, um, you know, whether you think they've done a good job or a bad job is that, you know, these are people who have, who have been told that they're losing their jobs. So they've got definitely got concerns and things that they want to get done, be it their prep for whatever they're going off to or whatever. But at some point, I would expect a formal announcement from Blizzard to talk about maybe not what has happened, but hopefully the future. And tied in with that is obviously going to be the season now, now flipping heck, the season nine announcement, which has been hinted that it's going to be coming hopefully in the next couple of days. And it's been said that there'll be more than just a seasonal minute. And if I'm honest with you, season nine needs to be an absolute banger. Season nine needs to come with not just the announcement that we are getting a whole heap of things that we actually want, like loads and loads of stuff that we actually want. It needs to be delivered 
flawlessly. Like, and and if anything, that is more the delivery is more important. But there also needs to be something good that comes with this, and not just on a compensation side of things. You know, a couple of hundred gold or a thousand gold or something. This season nine needs to be an absolute banger. Um, but like I say, the actual execution, the delivery of it needs to be as good as the content. And then season 10 will need to be the same as well. And then when we start getting into one year anniversary stuff, there now needs to be a trend of good shit being delivered and it being delivered not just well, it needs to be delivered like near perfectly uh, to start building that trust um, and that faith within people. Anyway, I have rambled on for far too long, and that's mostly because I didn't really have a proper set of notes for this, and I just wanted to go into it and give kind of my honest opinion. But let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, let's try and leave this on a better note with the four winners of the Scenarian uh, starter packs, which I can't even remember what was in them. Um, but let's go to the raffle. Let's announce the four winners, and then let's see what Rumble has got coming for us. Let's raffle. First winner is Zaxim Rumble, who says, totally agree. I can't even remember what you agree with. What was it on? Oh, it was on Conquistador's uh, tier listing, wasn't it? Excellent. So, Zaxim, hopefully I've said that right. Congrats. Second winner of the four is going to be Treble Chan, 4125. Agreed. When's the leaders? The leaders is out. In fact, I might link them up here. I'll, in fact, I will. The, the PvP tier list will be up here. And then the uh, the leaders tier list, I'll, I'll, I'll get both of them up here, or it'll be the video at the end. Anyway, Trouble Chan, hopefully I've said that right. Congratulations. The third winner is... Ra da oh, I'm not get oh, I don't know. Uh, thanks for the video. With latest patch, execute goes down in ranking a lot as it cannot hit court any longer and brings... Dragon Breath... W yeah, exactly. Talks about execute. Um, apparently, that spell... Unbound thing is be there's there's something coming, but it can't be rolled out as like a um, you know, just like a little um, it's like a client update. It needs to come out as like a, a like a proper thing. I, look, I don't know enough about this. The fourth and final winner, Scenarian Starter Pack, is that Ain Falco who has won this sort of stuff. PhD level content. Thanks, brother. Um, who's won stuff before? So congratulations to the four of you. That is all.